Hello all and good morning. So welcome to this uh, webinar on adaptive learning. Uh, it works just as well for both Moodle and for Totora, so it doesn't matter which platform you're working with. Okay. So, hope you're all well this morning and ready to go. Okay, now. So, first of all, here's me, Deborah Quaidlow, e-learning consultant at Innovation. There's my number and email address. If you need to contact me about uh, about adaptive learning or about anything else afterwards. Okay. So to begin with, um, we will be taking questions at the end. So if you're afraid you're going to forget any questions that you might have along the way, don't hesitate to type them into the chat, and we'll look at them afterwards. Okay. So a little bit about innovation. First of all, who are we? So one of the largest Moodle and Tatara partners um, with clients in Europe, uh, America, Africa, Asia, Middle East, and uh, with offices in Dublin, Bordeaux, in France, and, well, difficult to pronounce, Sichuan in Poland. Uh, and uh, we work mainly with uh, Moodle, Tatara, uh, Mahara. Okay. Bit of a selection of clients. Okay, and we cover the whole uh, spectrum of in e learning um, integrations, customization, support, maintenance, and we've got the consultancy and training, instruction de instructional design, the whole spectrum basically. So, as I say, Moodle, Tatara, and Mahara, and uh, Aura Talent, that's an in-house development, which is all about uh, competency management. So, keep about keeping your best employees and helping them progress along their career path. Okay. So now, let's reduce that and get straight in. So I'm using a, a Moodle 3.5 platform today, but as I said, it's all of this is um, native, what we're going to look at, it's all native to both Moodle and Tatara within courses. So everything works uh, just as well on both platforms. Okay, so three sections. Activity restrictions and completion conditions, which I'm sure you all know about. Then the lesson activity, which is very handy, but maybe not used as often as we should. And then there's quiz adaptability. I'm sure you all know about quizzes, but there are so many different ways in which we can use quizzes that are not always um, used to the best of their potential. So if we go back up to activity restrictions mm -hmm. and completion conditions. So this would be how we um, say how a, an activity would be completed. In this case, we see the dotted box showing that it's uh, an automatic completion. And then we go step by step. In this case, in this section here, it's a linear. So um, once the first activity is completed, which is a video, so when that is watched, you then gain access to the second activity, which is a lesson. You must complete the lesson with a past result, and then you would get uh, access to the following activity, which is a book activity, a review of the lesson. So this, we're in the admin view, as you can see. So we can see the restriction there. None for the first activity, available to everybody. Restricted here, not available unless the first activity is marked as complete. Otherwise, it's completely hidden from the learners. And then the third activity, not available unless the activity, the lesson, is complete and passed. Otherwise, it's completely hidden. In this particular case, it's a 75% uh, 
uh, grade that you need to pass. Okay. So if we take a little look at, uh, we've got a learner here. This is Leo Learner. And all he has done so far is he's clicked in and he has watched the video. Okay. He's watched the video. So because he's done that, he's gained access to the lesson activity afterwards. But he hasn't completed the lesson activity yet. So you can't see the review at all. Okay. Now, if I go to another learner, Anna, we can see that she has watched the video. Blue tick said it's complete. She has done the lesson and got a pass grade, achieved pass grade, and therefore she got access to the review and it's marked as completed. Okay. So this is the basic step by step. Okay. Now, if I go in to uh, sorry, I'm not in the admin here in the admin. If I go in to the lesson activity, we can see under settings. Now, restrict access. So the first, the video must be marked as complete. Cross out the eye in so then it's completely hidden otherwise. And then activity completion, this is where you put it in. And in this case, let's see, unlocks the completion conditions. Okay, activity completion. So we have the options of do not indicate completion, manually mark completion, or when conditions are met. So if we want to have the access being given automatically, it must be when conditions are met. For each different activity, the possible completion conditions are um, adapted to the particular activity we're in. In this case, we say require view and uh, require grade. So we don't bother with require view because we want them to achieve a grade. So therefore they must view it anyway. So we don't need to tick this one as well. Okay. And we can set a, a required time spent in this particular activity. Okay. So we go with minutes, make sure they're actually doing the work. Okay. So that's the first part. Okay. That's the first part. It's uh, restrictions and completion conditions. So let's move on now to the lesson activity. Okay. And in this section, actually, we've got um, completion conditions as well. So we've got a quiz here and I've set the completion conditions for the lessons. There are two lessons here you can see. So you get access to this one if the quiz is complete and passed. You get access to this one if the quiz is completed and failed. And then whether you do the pass lesson or the fail lesson, once you've completed it, either one, you get access to the review at the end. Not available unless lesson pass is complete or lesson fail is complete. You see, it's unless any. So you can see that there are ways that not only can you have the, a linear um, completion, restriction, completion, restriction, you can branch it off in different ways. Okay. So let's look at the lessons. First, we're going to look at the fail version of the lesson because this is the more the simpler setup. OK, so if I go in to edit. Okay. So in a lesson, you have uh, lots of different pages. Some can be information pages like the intro and example and the summary, and some can be question pages. So we've got a short answer question page matching numerical true false. Okay. So you have a variety of different types of pages. And what the lesson activity uh, does is it allows you to control the flow. So this here is a simple flow. We can see here 
you have on the introduction page, you have the option of just clicking to get to the next page or directly exiting straight to the end of the lesson. On the example page, you click to go to the next page. On this question page, depending on your answer, you if you get it right, you go to the next page. You've got three different options. You go to the next page. If you get it wrong, you're sent straight back to the introduction page, the first page. Okay. Same again, matching question page. If you get it correct, you go to the next page. If you get it wrong, you go to the introduction page. Okay. Again, right next page, wrong introduction page. So when you get past this question, numerical question page, and you go to the next page, we're into, uh, again, you get this right, you get to section two. So you've got the first section, first part. Each time you get it right, you go to the next page. Each time you get it wrong, you go straight back to the beginning. Once you get to section two, if you get it right, you go to the next page. If you get it wrong, you go back to section two, the start of section two. Okay, So you can structure it the way that you want. So we're just going to go into one question, Okay, the edit version of this particular question. So we can see the page title, page content. You put whatever you want. It's um, an editor, HTML editor, so you can put whatever you want. Here we have the jumps. This is the big thing about lessons, that you can put in different jumps. You can have whether you get a question right or wrong. Correct answer, response, good, good. That's your little feedback. Correct answer, jump. You go to the next page. You can choose which particular page you go to. You can choose previous page, next page, end of lesson, unseen question, random question, or you can choose the particular page you want to go to. So it's fantastic. You can completely guide uh, where your learners go to, uh, depending on the answers to the questions. And you've got your correct answer score. Then you've got your Wrong response, no, no, go back. Wrong answer jump, intro, which is the very first page of the lesson. Wrong answer score, zero. So this is the question itself because it's a matching question. And you've got the answer is London, matches with uh, answer UK. London in the UK, matching pair two, Paris, France, matching pair three, Dublin, Ireland, matching pair four, Rome, Italy, uh, matching pair five, nothing is in there. Okay. So if we go back, matching question page, um, preview. Okay. okay. Uh, let's see, we go through. There we've got our example page, then we've got our questions. Okay, I'm going to answer this one correctly. Submit. I get to the next page. Continue. And here's the question that we were looking at. Okay, it's a matching. And there we've got our list of possible answers. Okay. So that would be the simple, um, a simple version of a lesson activity. Now, if I go back, leave page, yes. If I go back then to the pass version, this just shows how, um, you know, how adapted you can have this. Now, we can see it's a much more complex version. It's the same, it's actually the same lesson. It's just that, in the fail version, uh, you can put to compare to make a difference between the past version of the lesson and the fail version of the lesson. You can put in much more information, much in the introduction page, and much more detail, and then on the example page before people start um, start the questions, you can give much more examples to your learners. So it's a bit of a more a slower paced, and 
the reason why it's just next, 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 it's so that, uh, and you go straight back to introduction and then you can do it again, back to the introduction, do it again. It gives your learners every opportunity to get all the correct answers. In this version, it's a much faster paced version of the lesson. So what happens is you've got your short answer question. If you get it correct, you go to this page, match question page P there. If you get it wrong, that's the P for pass because you got it right. And if you get it wrong, you go to this one, the fail version of the page. And then from there, it will send you to another page, pass version. Again, if you fail it and then you pass it, then you get sent to that same version. If you do this question and then you fail it, you get sent to a different page. If you do this question and you fail again, you get sent to another different page. Now, this looks difficult. It looks complicated. So instead, we've got a diagram version of it. Okay. So we can see introduction, example, first question. You get it right, you follow the green arrow. Okay. You get it right again. You follow the green arrow. You get it right again, follow the green arrow. You get it right again, you go to section two. And then in section two, you go straight to your first question. You get it wrong, back to the beginning of section two. Get it right, continue on. Get it wrong, back to the beginning of section two. Get it right, continue on. And to the end of lesson. That would be if we got all of our questions right along the way, the path here. Okay, follow the green arrows. If you went to here and you got it wrong, you go the red arrow, okay? You get it wrong again, red arrow. You get it wrong again, red arrow. And you get this message, sorry, you've got too many questions wrong in a row, end of lesson. And you get kicked out and you fail, okay? We could go this way, you could get it right and then get this one wrong and then get one right and then get one wrong. Okay, so we've got one question, uh, we've got one question wrong along the way, okay? Uh, well, one question wrong consecutively. We get this message and we're told, well, it's all right, you haven't got too many wrong, we'll let you go ahead anyway, okay? But you first get a message telling you, careful, you got a couple wrong, okay? So you can see it's like a tree. You can branch any way you want to. You can give different questions depending on different answers. Okay. This may seem a little complicated or clear and easy for you. So either way, you can get in touch afterwards and we can go through it nice and slowly with examples anyway. Okay. So um, let's go back now to the main page. So there we have it, we did the quiz, you failed it, you got access to the lesson fail, you complete that, you get access to the review, you did the quiz, you passed it, you got access to lesson pass, you completed it, you got access to the review. In this case, I think I, I put in about 10 attempts for the different lessons. But let's look at a learner, and we see here this person has failed the quiz, so they got access to lesson fail, okay? So if I click into the quiz, the lesson, sorry, first I see, see there, more detail, the introduction for the fail version, an example, more examples, now the questions. So if I answer any old thing here and submit, it says response, go back. And I go back to the introduction of the quiz, of the lesson. Okay, so that's how that one works. And in this case, this is Anna. She passed the quiz, got access to lesson pass. We've got an example, we've got questions. Okay, submit. Response and continue. Okay. And each case, okay, we 
can just keep on going and continue on. Okay, so let's see what happens. Oh, you got one or more questions. Uh, oh, one more question. No one's been given. Okay, right. Uh, five, submit. Wrong number. Okay, continue. Is water a liquid? Uh, no, submit. Wrong. Wrong answers, two. You got two wrong answers in a row. You may continue to level two. Continue to level two. And questions. Uh, is it first month? Yes. Bravo is my... Uh, okay, and lion. Oh, nope. I got back to section two content. It sent me back. So you see, this is the type of thing. This is how it works. Okay. So let's go back to the admin. So there we go. That's the lesson activity. And then the last part uh, is the quiz adaptability. Okay. So here we have a quiz. Now, there are different, uh, this particular quiz is interactive with multiple tries. So if I go into the settings for the quiz, okay. question behavior, I've chosen interactive with multiple tries, but there are other options. Okay, If we click on information, we can see a little more information about that. But basically, adaptive mode, that one you can get, you can check your answers and you can see feedback and you can try again, right? But interactive with multiple uh, tries, that one is um, a more complex version of adaptive mode. So interactive with multiple tries means that not only can you check your answers and get feedback, but you can give hints to your learners. You can give hints for each try. So if they get it wrong once, they get one hint. If they get it wrong again, they get another hint. And um, well, you can add lots of different hints, but you know, I think two is enough. They should be able to get it right after being given two hints. So uh, you can also have the overall feedback for the course. I like to have a link in there to back to the home, the course homepage. I think it's quite handy. You can give different feedback depending on the score as well. Oops, scroll down. So you can change the grade boundary and you can put in um, sort of 80% to 90%. And then that would be the feedback they receive if that's the score they get. Okay. We won't change that now. Now, if I go into the quiz itself, edit quiz, leave page, yes. We can see this quiz has random questions. Now, you need to create the questions first. So that would be in the question bank. And once the questions are created and in the question bank, then you can you click on add here. Oh. It's not allowing me to click. Oh, okay. I've, it's the quiz is open. Sorry, you cannot add or remove questions because the quiz has been attempted. All right. Well, you would click on add there and select um, random question. Okay. Right. Uh, then in the question bank, then this is where I get my questions from, and. I selected five questions in the quiz that are taken randomly from this question bank. So you can see that there are obviously more than five questions here, but these would be the questions that would appear in the quiz um, and taken randomly. Okay. Now you can see that there are some basic questions, matching question, lots of matching questions. Then uh, we've got embedded answers. That's very handy because it's very uh, flexible. 
go drag and drop into text, okay, drag and drop into image, and here we can see random short answer matching. Now, random short answer matching, same as if you're going to select random questions for the whole quiz, you have to first have your questions to be selected from. If you're using a random short answer matching question, you need to first have short answer questions to select from. Okay. So here, if I go in, what comes after three? Okay. And your answer is four, obviously. The word four and anything else is no great. Okay. Multiple tries. Okay. Here, this is what we we're talking about. You can add hints. So hint number one, if you get it wrong the first time, there are lots of numbers, but only one is correct. And hint number two, oh, come on now, because it's a fairly easy question. Obviously, your hints might be a little better than that. And if I use the random short answer matching, it will select from the short answer questions that exist in the question bank you've selected. So I'm getting questions from, uh, from this category. So those three questions that we saw. And multiple tries, numbers, choices, hint number two, it's a 50-50. Because in fact, we've chosen to take select two questions here. And then the other version of the questions that are you know, adaptable is the simple calculated question. This will be mainly for like, numbers, okay? So we put in, uh, what is the surface in meter squared of a rectangle with a base of, there's our variable in curly brackets and in curly brackets. Okay, and here's the answer formula, B multiplied by H. It automatically generates the answer, okay? And feedback, good job, okay? And uh, we've got multiple tries, multiply the numbers is the hint, use a calculator, the other hint. And we've got wild cards here. This is how it does it. So it asks you for the number of decimal places to use, range of values, so it's between a minimum of one and a maximum of 10, okay? Minimum one, maximum of 10, and then you generate the number of wild cards that you want, okay? So that means that in one question, it will randomly select um, the uh, variables out of however many sets you create. So if you create 10 sets, then there are 10 possible variations of the, uh, the base and the height for this square rectangle. Okay. Right, so that's the complicated side of it. We're going to preview the quiz. Okay. So here we have here Los Angeles. If I do this, wrong answers. And I check, think Hollywood desert. This is the hint that you get. You've correctly selected zero, think Hollywood desert. Uh, well, prime number less than six, okay. And check, it'll give me a hint. There are so many to choose from. Not a very good hint. Okay, now if I choose this, okay. And my hint is, well, Brazil should be easy anyway. Yeah, Brazil, Brasilia. Okay. Now, and there's the numerical one. So it generated 2.4 and 8.8. And what's the following number? Go on, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and check. Again, multiply the numbers. That's the hint that we saw. Okay. So 
all of these questions, if I do the quiz again, we've seen here the first question is Los Angeles Phoenix. We see the second question, prime number of six, match the countries with the cities. Now, if I go to my uh, one of my test users and I take the quiz, I see now the first question is the calculating the surface area. What's the following number? I see this question. What's the following number? It's uh, uh, it's another version of the same question. We see the cities one again, and then this one is different. Okay, we didn't see that one before either. And if I go in as this user instead, I now see. Oh, I've done a few versions. Let's look. The first one. Number. What number comes after three? What's next? Country, uh, countries with cities. Okay. And if I look at my second attempt, less than prime number less than six. This one we haven't seen yet. There's the drag and drop into images. We hadn't seen that before. The factors of ten. We hadn't seen that before. Okay. And in the last attempt, we see the cities one appearing again. Calculation. We see this is the close question. Uh, no, it's the drag and drop. So we have there uh, a different question. So there we've seen three uh, attempts by the same person. And in each attempt, uh, the questions that appeared were different. Obviously, when you're selecting randomly from a limited number of questions, you're going to get a bit of repetition in there, but that's the whole point of it being random, right? Okay, so I think we have covered just about everything. So now, I'm going to uh, expand this and we'll see if there uh, are any questions. Okay, so let's scroll. I see that there's a few different things there. Oh. Okay. Can I test a gap analysis plugin somewhere? Um, a gap analysis plugin. I'll get in touch with you about that if you can send me your uh, contact details, Michael. Um, I'm not sure what the gap analysis plugin is. Uh, I'm sure it wouldn't take long to. Okay. Uh, in any case, there are an awful lot of uh, uh, plugins that can be used for adaptability uh, in courses like H5P. Um, but this is all things that are native to Moodle. Um, yes, of course, you, you'll all get the recording afterwards. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, oh, or a talent. Right, sorry. Okay, great. Yes, uh, I see that uh, um, my colleague has been in touch about the gap analysis. So. Okay. Lesson activity. Um, no, lesson activity is native to all uh, versions of Moodle. It's just that it's not used nearly enough uh, as much as it uh, it could be. But it's very, very handy. And uh, it's all standard to Totora as well. Yes. So yes, I'm just using Moodle uh, today, but um, uh, this course is in, um, uh, can be in Tutara as well, absolutely. Any other questions? Actually, I nearly forgot. In here, this is the um, touch screen. Um, lesson rather than the pass or the fail lesson. If I go into the this one, 
it, I, I did mention clusters. We would be talking about clusters. A, a cluster is a grouping of pages. And what's great about using clusters uh, is that you can select you unseen question within a cluster. You see this as a jump. So uh, if you get a question right, you can be sent to an unseen question in this there cluster to end of cluster. So you'd be you see these questions randomly uh, until you get them all right and then you move on. Okay. Or if you get them wrong, in this case, uh, you get sent to resistive touch screen extra information. So it gives you extra information. That's the page there. Oops, sorry. That's the page there before then moving on to answering questions again. So when you use clusters, grouping of pages, you can be sent randomly to different pages within that grouping. So that can be nice. Okay. Any other questions? Anything you would like to see in uh, a little more detail? Okay, so well, I think I think that's it. Uh, you're very welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Um, so we we'll leave it at that. And if you'd like uh, to go through the uh, lesson activity, or um, if you need a bit more help in the restrictions and completion conditions and how you can manipulate that, because it doesn't only have to be true step by step uh, by uh, different activities being completed. You can also give access by uh, cohort groups or uh, audiences, so to specific sets of people uh, or different languages or lots and lots of different ways you can do that. Um, and for the quizzes, you might want to see that in a little more detail, see exactly how uh, the random uh, questions can be set up. Uh, maybe you view, you've created questions directly for quizzes rather than using question banks. So if you want to see that in more detail, same, just get in touch. Um, I'll open that presentation there again. This is the page with my contact details. Okay. So if you send me an email or give a call and uh, or in the chat there you can leave your email address directly if you'd like to be contacted okay don't hesitate so there you go if there are no more questions then we leave it at that and i say thank you very much to everybody for attending today and uh, maybe we'll see you again in the, the near future for another webinar on another fascinating topic thank you goodbye <laughs>